Like to stop using oil immediately is to collapse civilization. That means like you have no agriculture, you have no building, you have no international trade. And you know, while what we're doing is a little bit controversial, I think we can all agree that like civilization collapsing tomorrow is worse than us putting up some balloons that smell a little bad. Okay, ready? Yeah. Got it? Yeah. So this balloon weighs about 600 grams, but we just want to make sure that it's accurate because there could be some variance in the manufacturing. We know the exact payload, so we can calculate the amount of gas we need to put in. So uh, 600, 612 grams is the weight of the balloon. Okay. First was 200 grams, second was 374. Okay. A little more than 200? Okay. We are cooling Earth by deploying reflective particles to very high altitudes. And just like when you're under the shade of a nice tree versus in the direct sun, this is gonna create a little bit of cooling, but on the planetary scale. This might actually be a punctured balloon, no? Yeah, you can kind of smell it a little bit right now. But it just smells like rotten eggs. Yeah. yeah. This was the thing that we could do that most needed doing and no one else was doing it. So, you know, that combination of being the hacky kind of project that I can actually pull off and no one else doing it really, really made it compelling. And you learned by doing. Exactly. Exactly. Now, we didn't know if this was legal or not until we launched our first balloon and, you know, government agencies started to reach out to us. And so, uh, and then they just asked us what we're doing. We explained and they let us keep doing what we're doing. So. Yeah. The first coverage was, what, what is this crazy sci-fi idea? What are these idiots doing? Now it's, wow, these idiots might be right. <laughs> and soon it'll become, we need to pressure governments to do this because basically there's, a, there's like a trough of despair in learning about climate. People either ignore it, which is entirely rational in my opinion, or they start paying attention. And when they dig on the numbers, they reach one of two conclusions. They either become a climate doomer, which is also very rational in my opinion, or they have some wishful thinking and pretend that recycling their coffee cups is gonna save the world, which is not true and everybody knows it. Or they get through this trough of despair and realize that there are technologies, while controversial, that can really make a difference. The most important and one of the least explored, in my opinion, is reflecting a little bit of sunlight before it reaches the surface of the Earth. Very sophisticated duct tape attachment system. So this, the crinkling you hear is the actual weather balloon parachute. It's uh, usually they're polyethylene, so like the same as a, as a shopping bag. And then there's about eight feet of rope that goes up to the balloon. This just hangs down below, and then when the balloon pops, the whole structure begins to fall. I'll attach the GPS outside, and then we'll be ready to start inflating the balloon. This is effective, and it has carrying capacity, meaning we can do this, not wait on a bunch of miraculous someday maybe technology, and maintain a livable world at or below pre-industrial temperatures until, tech, until and when technologies mature to pull a meaningful amount of carbon dioxide out of the air and otherwise, you know, get, get our atmosphere back under control. Oh yeah, this is a smaller one, much easier. Yeah. I'm not holding it anyway. Okay. Got another three minutes or so, right? Yeah. I think the park ranger's there. 
Good, how are you? Good, Luke. Nice to meet you. My name's Ranger Mink. How can I help you? How can I help you? I'm just, uh, what brings you out to the park today? Uh, we're just launching some weather balloons. Oh, launching, launching weather balloons. Yeah. What, uh, I'm curious, like, uh, whose weather balloons are they? What agency are you with? What are they? What, what I'm just curious. Can you tell me more yeah, about it? Yeah, of course. It? Um, so we use helium and a little bit of sulfur gas. And what we're doing is tracking where the balloons go, one. And then two, at scale, what we want to do is create a little bit of reflectivity in the stratosphere. Things get weird in the stratosphere. It's like right near where sulfur dioxide changes from a gas to a liquid. But if we go higher up, the stratosphere actually gets warmer as you increase your elevation. The tagline the high altitude parachute guys use is that we know more about the bottom of the ocean than we do about the stratosphere. Um, yeah, and then we try to get companies someday to buy cooling credits representing like a slight amount of cooling for each gram that we put up. So yeah, that's the, that's the gist of it. Interesting. So this is a private company? Yeah. Your company? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Let's go check it out, huh? Yeah, of course. So this is our tracking setup, camera, balloon, sulfur dioxide going into it, and then we add helium, let it go. It'll be another like five minutes of the, like five minutes to we launch. So how'd you choose to this location? Oh, we look at the, there's an app where you can predict, like a website where you can model where your weather balloons are likely to go. And we just basically choose our location. We've lost several balloons in the Delta, including with our fancy camera on it. So we try to choose a location where it'll end up somewhere where it's recoverable. So this one looks like, and you know, we don't want to be around a ton of people. Sure. So you said you're uh, wrapping up soon? Yeah. Yeah, this is our last balloon. Okay. We'll be cool. out of here 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. When this becomes an actual industry and people really start innovating here, we'll see other molecules put up with much less reactivity, hopefully, and much greater lifetimes in the stratosphere. There's just basically, there's no reason for anyone to research this because it's so controversial. And there's very little funding around it. And like, you know, we have yet to figure out how to build a real business around this, let alone anyone else. I think the controversy is around the intentionality of it, right? People are doing it on accident or not on purpose, but we're actually doing it on purpose. And so that's where the, I think the, the, uh, the friction lies. Um, and so by doing it and normalizing it uh, and inviting press and talking to people about it, that's, that's how we make it less controversial. And I think we've been doing that. And even if it stays controversial, we need to do it, yeah. right? Like there have been plenty of things that were controversial when people did them, but still needed doing. So, you know, the world will catch up. But also there's not a ton left to research in terms of modeling like you can you can research forever and if you ask a researcher if they have things to research and want some money for it of course they're going to say yes but like unlike marine cloud brightening or many other potentially powerful technologies we know the directionality of this nobody debates whether so2 in the stratosphere creates warming versus cooling that's not true with marine cloud brightening and some other technologies it's unclear directionally whether it will create warming or cooling so Given the volatility around other potentially powerful technologies here and the lack of controversy that a lot of them have, I think it's just a matter of not much time until this becomes just another normal thing that we have to do. Hopefully we'll have a positive change in cooling down our planet. Sunscreen for Earth is, is the best way to describe it. We're just copying Mother Nature. Volcanoes have been doing this for millions of years. It doesn't fix everything, but this can fix temperature. 
there are all kind of geopolitical consequences that we can theorize about. We know right now that needless suffering is happening and we know we can reduce that by deploying this at scale. It shouldn't be our job, nor anyone who's trying to innovate. It shouldn't be their job to imagine every possible downstream political consequence before they take any action. The world is doing quite a good job of intentionally causing an ecological disaster with our carbon-based geoengineering. What we're doing stays up for two years. It's the same thing that volcanoes output, and we have millennia of a natural record of what it does. So this idea that we're going to do something that magically upsets the world, I, that is true, and it is via our carbon emissions. They're planetary tipping points. We're not sure exactly when they happen, but we're getting damn close, most people think, to many of them. Um, so yeah, to, to treat this People are scared of new things. Technology got us into this problem and technology will get us to muddle through it as it always has.